on these long edges I'm using my sanding block. I got those pretty much done. And then on these inside edges I'm just using this foam block. And all I'm doing is just, you know, 45 and I'm then going nearly parallel to that edge. Nearly parallel to this a surface. And then just rolling it over. Putting that, putting a, a round over on it instead of just cutting that edge at a 45. Well, as simple as that project is, uh, it took a lot of time and effort, I'll tell you that. And some thinking besides just to figure out how to use that domino and to get that spacing just right. So I'll work on the base. I, I'm, I'm still kicking that around. This thing is really quite stable and it's it's as square as can be. I mean I checked all the shelves and I'm amazed even at, uh, at myself there's there's just no movement here and that other one down below this one is the same way. I'm, I'm pleased with that. I'm, I'm pleased with the fit and finish. So that'll, it's, it, speaking of finish, it'll be, it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to put, a, put some finish on this, but you can see that it's pretty, I mean it's sitting on a rubber mat, but I guess what I'll, the part I'm getting at, let me zoom this out. Is that you'd think that maybe it would have a little bit of a uh, wanting to rack, I guess, because these shelves are so narrow, but the thing is rock solid. I mean, part of that is the, the distance between the, the two sides. The wider you get, the more you're going to experience that but I think that'll be that is going to be nice once I get a, some finish on it all right there they are a matched pair uh, they turned out really well and I'm very surprised at how stable they are uh, the one thing I wanted to check was like the tipping point and it's about right there. So I think you really have to get, you really have to bump them hard to tip them over. The wall is going to be back here, so they're not going that way. The base, I thought I was going to do something kind of crazy and do a like a compound miter cut on there to flare it out a little bit, but I don't think that's necessary. Uh, once I add three quarters of an inch width out here, you know, I'm going to miter that corner, but that's going to make it, uh, make that tipping point even further. So I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do with that. Let's see, I've got enough here. No, I don't have enough for that. i got enough for the sides, but not the front. I'll have to come up with a piece for the front. At any rate, remarkably stable. I, because it's, uh, you know, there's no, I did cut any dados uh, to recess these shelves. It's just a, basically a mortise and tenon joint. It, it uh, really is solid. So, um, uh, I think I may be more apt to use that type of joinery again in the future. Uh, so. Here's the other one clamped up. I just put a little chamfer on this edge and then uh, I'm going to let this one set up and dry. Sand down that base and clean up this glue up. I've got two spots to clean up. 
And then she'll be ready to go. All right, one coat of finish on these, and uh, this is what I'm using. Uh, Minwax. Uh, I, I bought this just because I was kind of in a hurry and my uh, other place that sells general finishes was closed. So I went and bought this at the big box store and um, put on one coat and then this one has been sanded with 220. Okay, it feels pretty good. All the flat surfaces um, are done. Now the one in the back here, or the other one, I guess I'll put it that way, I had uh, some issues with the first one. I shouldn't say issues, but I had some drips from the top that rolled over this corner and um, I had to get my scraper out to knock those down. And then I thought, well, why don't I just scrape the finish instead of sanding it. So this one, that's what I'm doing. And I think that the, the difference with this is that I can really get into these corners. And then I just pull out. And you can hear that rough, the roughness. And you can feel it as well. Now when I go back the second time, This feels as smooth as that one. A little rough right in there. Okay, go. There, I got a little curl. No, there, there it is. That finished evidently from the edge. I roll over. Right there. So now I, I can feel that dragging more. You can just, you can feel the thickness of the finish. To me, that's a lot faster and it's just as smooth and then I'll come over it with my damp rag here and wipe that off. And that feels good. So, I guess the proof will be in the pudding here when I put the finish on, the second coats. But, you know, that, that, that feels good. And the, the thing I like about using this scraper is I can get right into these corners. Pull it out. And the other thing is, I don't even remember the last time I sharpened this scraper, so I don't know how sharp it is. But... You can feel it. And you can hear it. There's a little drip back there. Take that down. That's it.
you know, especially on a project like this with the, where you got to get in here tight. This was. Much easier than, than uh, using the sandy block like I did on the other one there. And a little hump right there. And now it's gone. Good to go. Well, the early returns are in. Uh, it seems about the same to me, but the poles haven't closed yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Only 20% uh, of the precincts have reported. Well, there they are. The one on the right was the sanded version and the one on the left is the uh, one I use a scraper on. So the one, this, this one turned out just a fraction better. Not by a lot, but, but I did notice a little bit of a difference, especially on the sides. So sanding I think is the way to go. But in a pinch, uh, you could get away with it, I guess. I, di I did get away with it. So, anyway, that's it. They're all set to go. Thanks for watching.